Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem combination sum 2. We've already solved combination sum 1 and this is a pretty similar problem to the first one. We're given a collection of candidates and these are always going to be positive numbers and we're given a positive target number that we want to sum up to. And there could be multiple combinations from the candidates that can sum up to this target number. So we want to find all unique combinations that sum up to the target. Also, each number from candidates can only be used up to one time. So it's not like it's unbounded, right? We don't have an infinite supply of each one. And the solution set cannot contain duplicates. So this is what's actually gonna make this problem a little bit tricky because take a look at the input, right? So we want to sum up to target A. We can do that by taking a one and taking a seven, and that'll give us the sum eight. We can also, instead of taking the first one, we could take the seven and then take the second one, right? That's a different combination, but it's the same exact combination, right? So we cannot count it twice. You can see in the output, one seven only shows up once. So we don't wanna have any duplicates. So that's what I'm really gonna be focusing on because if we just wanna get all possible combinations, that's pretty easy, right? It's just going to be a decision tree, right? For each value such as 10, we could say, okay, include 10 or don't include 10, meaning we skip 10, right? Then next, we'll do the same thing for one. Include one or skip one over here, include one, or skip one, right? So we'd have one combination 10, one. Okay, over here, I was supposed to skip one. So over here, we'll take one. Over here, we skip one. So here, we have a combination 10, one, just 10, or just one, or nothing, right? So we're looking for all combinations. We can enumerate it like that, but the problem we're gonna notice if we do it like this is we're gonna end up with duplicate combinations. So let me try to explain how we can do it without duplicate combinations. By the way, no matter how we do it, since we do actually have to create all the combinations, the time complexity overall is gonna be two to the power of n, because that's how many combinations we can have for each value. We can choose to include it or not include it. n is gonna be the size of the input candidates. So let's take a look at this example input array and let's say we're trying to sum up to target eight. So let's just start back with that previous decision tree I was on. So let's try it number by number and let's see why this doesn't work. So we can choose to include 10 or choose not to include 10, right? Basically skip 10. Now notice how already when we choose 10, we actually went over the target, right? So none of the paths in this left tree, the decision tree are ever gonna be equal to the target because all of these numbers are positive. We're always gonna be greater than the uh, value, the target value eight. So this basically stops. So we can choose not to continue down that way. Now from here, we can choose to include one or skip one. And then, so then, you know, that takes care of one. Then next we get to two. So from here, we can choose to include two or skip two here include two, uh, where we you know didn't choose anything here, or skip two, where we will still have nothing over here. And then basically keep doing that until we ever get to a target, a sum where the target, or the sum total is equal to the target. Uh, so now we can do the same thing with seven, include seven or skip seven. Uh, similarly over here, include seven or skip seven. Here we can also include seven, but notice how if we do that, then we get a sum of nine that was too big, right? So this decision, this path is not gonna lead to a solution here. We also got to, I think, 10, so we cannot find the sum uh, eight. Uh, this though is going to be a possible solution, one seven. This so far is too small, but basically now what I'm getting at you probably get the main idea here, but what I'm getting at is this is not gonna work because this is going to lead to duplicates. Uh, let me show you why. So here we can include seven or skip seven. And now, so we're gonna do the same thing with six, right? Let me just skip six for now and just show you what happens with the one. So we can include one or skip one, but notice how this path over here is also seven one, right? And this path is also one seven. So it's the same path, right? It's basically the same sum. So we ended up with a duplicate. How can we ignore duplicates? Well, first of all, let me explain the logic of how we're gonna go about it. And then I'm gonna show you the actual algorithm. So initially our problem is we wanna sum to the target eight, right? So, so this is the, what we're trying to look for. So we can think of it in two different ways ways, right? One decision is going to be where we include a one value, 
right, for this subproblem eight, because notice how we have multiple ones. That's kind of where the problem comes from. That's how we end up getting duplicates. So one path, well, we will include ones. And in another path, we're not going to include any ones for the sum for the subproblem eight, right? So by doing that, by saying, okay, this left subtree is definitely going to contain a one, this right subtree is not going to contain any ones at all, we can guarantee that both of these are going to lead to different combinations, right? I think that is kind of obvious. This contains a one, this will never contain a one, so they're always going to be different combinations. And similarly, it's basically a recursive definition. So next, we'll get to the subproblem seven, right? We're now we're trying to sum up to seven over here because we already have a one, so now we just want to sum up to seven. Again, what we're going to say is, okay, left subtree could include a one and right subtree is never going to contain a one. So the left subtree definitely has a one. The right subtree never has a one. So by definition, you know, this path is always going to be different than this path. They're always going to lead to different uh, combinations. So that's kind of the main logic we're going to follow. Let me show you how we're actually going to implement that. Since we're going to be doing this recursively, as I just kind of mentioned that it's a recursive definition, uh, one thing that's going to be easy for us to keep track is one, we're going to have a pointer i, which is going to tell us what position we're at so far. And we can only choose elements that are equal to i or to the right of i. And so, you know, the, what we're trying to do is say, okay, in one path, we're including a one. And later, we're going to say, the other path is basically we're not including any ones. So it would be easy for us if we sorted the input array, because if we sorted it, this is kind of what it would look like. It would look one, one. So this is if we sorted the array. So then if our pointer I is at this one, we can say, okay, one path is including this one, in which case, you know, the, the sub problem will become I plus one. We're then looking at the remaining portion of the array. If we decide not to include any ones at all, our I pointer is over here. We're saying we're going to skip this one and this one. We're skipping all of the ones. We're basically saying we're going to shift I all the way to the point where we have reached a different element because now if our pointer i is over here, we can choose from any of these values and we guarantee that none of these values are ever going to contain the value one because the array is sorted, right? So that's mainly the logic that we're gonna follow. It's still a brute force solution. So the time complexity is gonna be two to the power of n, but let me just give you a quick walkthrough of how it's gonna work. So initially we have a choice. We can choose one or we can skip one. Let's start with this tree, right? Since we skipped one, that means we skipped both of the ones, right? So now we're only gonna be able to choose from these values. So next we're at two, we can choose two or skip two. And since we're skipping two, we only have a single two here. So when we're shifting our I pointer, we only have to shift it by one, right? Now we have all of these values to choose from six, seven, 10. So basically these two uh, subtrees are gonna be pretty much identical. So we can either here choose six or skip six. Similarly over here, choose six or skip six and so on and so on. And you can see that once we choose a seven over here, basically all of these are gonna go over, right? These are gonna be too big. These are always gonna be greater than 10. You can kind of see how that's gonna work out with these candidates. This is a possible solution, two, six. Uh, but over here, we're gonna end up and once we get to a solution to six, then we don't want to continue anymore because then we know if we add positive values, we're always going to exceed the target value. So we found one solution. But over here, if we choose the next value that's available to us, seven, we see that that's actually going to go over to two plus seven is going to be nine. That's going to be too big for the target. So we're not going to continue here either continue on this left subtree. So we included a one. So now we have a choice of including another one or skipping all the ones to all together, right? So if we include another one, we'll get something like this, another one, and then we'll have choices. Uh, we can choose a two or we can skip two. And then if we include the next value, it's going to be six, which is going to end up being too great. Basically, we exceeded the target when we went down this path, so we don't continue. And then over here, we're so far at a sum of two. We include the next value. We skipped two on this path, but we include the next value, six. So now we found another solution, one plus one plus six. And if we chose the other decision, if we choose seven, we're gonna end up going over. So we're not gonna continue down this path. Let me just save a little bit of space. So next over here, uh, if we skipped the one, we could have gotten a two and then we would have gotten a six, seven or 10. And that also would have been too great. Right. But we also could have skipped the two as well. And if we skipped the two, we could have gotten a seven. And this is also a, another uh, solution. So we found three different solutions. 
right? So we found three different solutions, one, seven, two, six, and one, one, six. I think that's all three of the solutions and you can kind of see how doing it this way ended up eliminating the duplicates, right? We either chose a one, in which case we could have chosen any of the elements or we skipped one and we skipped both of the ones and then we could have only chosen these. So with that being said, we can now actually dive into the code it's a little bit tricky, but I'll guide you through it. Let's get into the code now. And remember, the first thing that we wanted to do is actually sort our input array candidates. That's going to make it easy for us to eliminate the duplicates. And we're going to be maintaining a result, which is going to be basically the, uh, you know, the, the combinations that we're returning. And we're going to be doing this with backtracking. It's recursive and we're basically just doing the brute force. So we're gonna have three variables. Cur is gonna be basically, we're maintaining the current combination. And another variable is gonna be I, the index that we're at in our candidates array. And lastly is going to be the current target that we're trying to sum up to, because every time we add a candidate, we're basically decreasing the target that we're trying to sum up to. So if this target ends up becoming zero that means we've reached the base case we've found the solution in that case what can we do well we want to update our result right to the result we're going to append what the current combination is but we're going to make a copy of the current combination because this is kind of a variable that we're passing around we're going to still be updating this current value and and when we append it we want to append a copy we don't want to append the original array itself because that's a reference we want to make a copy before we add it to the result Another base case is going to be if the target is greater than zero or even if it's equal to zero, either case, we want to end up returning. So basically, if the target was equal to zero, we would execute this statement and then after we would return. If it wasn't equal to zero, but it was greater uh, or actually I should say less than zero, that means we went negative, then we want to return anyway. So next, we want to go through every single candidate in the input. Right, we want to consider each one the first value. And what are we going to do with this candidate? Well, we're going to append it to the current combination, right? And this is basically the pre-work before we actually call the backtracking function once again. So now we're going to be going recursive, right? We updated our current combination. We're going to uh, send the current into this function. We're also going to say I plus one because we're saying that we can choose any of the remaining uh, candidates and we're going to say the target is now going to be equal to itself minus this candidate that we just ended up choosing. And after we finish that recursive call, we want to do a little bit of cleanup. So we want to basically remove the current candidate that we just ended up adding to the combination. But don't forget, remember what I was saying. So if we chose the, a candidate such as one, then on the next iteration of the loop, we don't want to end up choosing that same candidate twice. Right, we want to make a branch. We want to say, okay, we can choose this candidate. We already chose one uh, decision where we ended up adding that candidate one. The next time we want to skip one. So how can we do that? Well, we can say, okay, if this candidate is equal to the previous candidate that we just chose, then we want to skip this iteration of the loop. So then we have to maintain what that previous candidate was. So over here, we can say, okay, previous is now going to be the current candidate that we just chose so that we can use this, va this variable in the next iteration of the loop. But we still have to initialize this with something outside of the loop. So the default value I'm just going to give it is negative one because none of the candidates are going to be negative one. So this will never, this if statement will never execute as being true on the first iteration, which is what we want it to do. And so that actually is the entire recursive uh, function. We're just you know brute forcing it. There's just a little bit of logic. You have to do a little bit of cleanup. And basically this previous variable is what eliminates the duplicates for us. So after that, all we have to do is call the backtracking function, passing in an empty array for the initial combination. That makes sense. Starting at index zero, that makes sense. And the target value that we want to sum up to is the target value that we're given in the input. That also makes sense. Once we're done with that, we can just return the result that we updated and added all the combinations to from this line over here. Oops, uh, for some reason, and so, uh, you know, this candidate is the candidate of index I. I don't, I always forget. And it has an S at the end. And down here, I also called it candidate. You can tell that I'm pretty sleepy right now, but hopefully those are all the typos that I had. Oh, and lastly, uh, when we're actually taking our index I, 
uh, we're, we don't want to necessarily go through all the indices. That's why we're passing in this I uh, value in the input backtrack. So actually, instead of calling this I, since we're actually using a different variable for I here, I'm going to call this I position, basically the starting position that we're starting at when we call the recursive function. So from here, for, instead of saying for I in range of the entire uh, candidates, we actually want to start at this starting position and then go to the end of candidates. So that's going to be the actual solution. Sorry about all the bugs and typos, but as you can see, this solution actually does work and it is pretty efficient. So I hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.